Hey guys, Dr. Damon Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about a super common condition. It's been requested many times over the years, so here we go. It's called keratosis pilaris, or KP. It's also known as um, red bumps on your arms, legs, and also the face. How common is it? It is super common. It's probably one of the most important or most common dermatoses that dermatologists see anywhere in the world. It occurs, depending on the literature you read, between five to 30% of the population. So imagine that one in three actually suffer from keratosis pilaris. So what is it? Basically it's a rash which presents as tiny little bumps. The bumps can be red or the bumps can be white. And they usually present on the back of your arms, front of your legs, buttock area, thigh area, but also on the face and in rare situations, the eyebrows. So who are some common people or people who are famous, I guess, who actually have this rash? Bill Clinton um, has keratosis pilaris. Rumor has it that Monica Lewinsky gave it to him, but I think that's actually a lie. Joke. Uh, <laughs> Prince Harry and Prince William also have it. So when you look at the royal family, especially when they were younger, you can see that they've got ruddy faces, they're a little bit red. Um, they've got keratosis pilaris. So what does it say? If the royal family and the president of, well, the ex-president of the United States had keratosis pilaris, it's hard to treat. So remember, <laughs> these guys get access to the best doctors, best dermatologists throughout the world, and they still have it. So most of the time, people grow out of it. So the natural history of keratosis pilaris is generally speaking, it starts around childhood, peaks around adolescence, and it hangs out for about um, 20 years or so, and usually gets better in the third to fourth decades of life. Having said that, my brother, who's nearly 50, he's still got it. But generally speaking, it gets less with time. So when we talked about keratosis pilaris, what kinds are there? In the dermatology literature and our textbooks, we give fancy names to keratosis pilaris, but I'll go through common things, broad things, and also specifics. So the most common is called keratosis pilaris or keratosis ruba pilaris. Ruba, Latin for red. Basically, that's red bumpy rash. So that's the most common that usually occurs, like I said, on the back of your arms, your thighs, and your face. So that's keratosis ruba pilaris. Keratosis pilaris on the face, for example, if you have um, rough skin on the face, which is red, you may not have it elsewhere. This is called keratosis pilaris rubra facii. Facii is basically Latin for face. So we've got KP, KP rubra pilaris, KP rubra pilaris facii. You also have the white variant, which is, means there's no red in the background, and that's called keratosis pilaris alba, which is Latin for white. Then you have more unusual types. For example, keratosis pilaris pustulosa. Pustulosa means they get in secondarily infected. That kind of KP is usually seen at the back of your legs, back of your thighs, buttocks, where you have occlusion. You can have another type on the face called ul erythema ophrogenes. That's basically a big name to say you've got keratosis pilaris affecting your eyebrows, which can cause hair loss. The other variant, which is super rare, is called keratosis Polaris atrophicans, which is basically a hair follicle which has gone atrophy, which means you have these little divots which can affect your face, but also your scalp. Another form of keratosis polaris is a, a big long name, which is erythromelanosis facii et coli, which is basically um, keratosis polaris together with brown and red. So imagine that in derm, yeah, we had to learn all of these fancy names in Latin as well, and that's it. Okay, guys, so how to treat this common condition? Well, let's go through a few things. <laughs> let's talk about how dermatologists treat it first, and I'll give you, if you hang out there for just a couple of minutes, I'll give you DIY and home tips. So how dermatologists treat it? They usually use one of um, three or four things. The first thing they use is what's known as a keratolytic. Keratolytic basically means uh, something that can exfoliate the skin. Because keratosis pilaris occurs due to occlusion of the actual hair follicle due to excess skin or keratin, one of the best ways to treat it is to remove the actual layer of keratin. So that's where keratolytics come in handy and exfoliants. So when we talk about exfoliants, we talk about chemical exfoliants, and the most common chemical exfoliant that we use include lactic acid, glycolic acid, and the beta-hydroxy acid known as salicylic acid. So when it comes to formulations, you can go for something like this. 
Lactic acid between five to 20% um, as needed, basically application three to five times per week. You can use glycolic acids. You can also use um, what's known as a BHA or salicylic acid. You can use salicylic acid as a cream. Generally speaking in the cream, the concentration ranges from three to 7%. You can also use salicylic acid as a wash. So I keep going on and on about a cost-effective way to exfoliate. In a 2% salicylic acid, for example, La Roche-Posay makes some excellent compounds, Efficar, Micropeel, Exfoliant. So you can use that nightly in the shower, both to your face, arms, legs, and that can help. And then you can start using your lactic acid as well. So what else do dermatologists use? Well, we also use retinoids, which is basically retinoic acid that can be prescription, something like tretinoin or adapalene or the new fourth generation retinoid known as triferritin. Or you can have over-the-counter. So things like retinol, retinol palmitate, or retinaldehyde can help. Now, dermatologists also use oral retinoids. So these are reserved for really, really bad cases, potentially of keratosis pilaris causing marked problems, whether it be uh, infection or basically hair loss as well. Now, sometimes we add little ingredients in the creams to make it better. So it's basically like a upsizing your compounded creams. So if you get regular infections, as in keratosis, pilaris, pustulosa, your dermatologist may add something like chlorhexidine, maybe one to 2% chlorhexidine, or another formulation we use is thymol, whether it be 0.5 to 2% thymol. Some dermatologists also add propylene glycol and alcohol. So the propylene glycol can actually uh, deliver more of the actives. So in that case, the lactic acid or the glycolic acid deeper down into your skin to make these skincare actives work harder. Now, what about lasers? Well, this is my view on lasers. So remember, I'm a laser dermatologist. I laser day in, day out. That's my actual occupation. Lasers in the context of keratosis pilaris, well, can it work? Yes, it can, but generally speaking, you need higher settings because we're treating very small blood vessels. The PD or the pulse duration needs to be very short. When that happens, you may expect some untoward side effects such as bruising and swelling. Laser itself does not cure keratosis pilaris, but it can help decrease the redness. Most patients will require between two to three sessions and generally speaking, we like to space it out between four to six weeks apart. But once again, if you're gonna use a laser, be prepared for a longer recovery than what's expected. For example, with rosacea, just to treat generalized redness. So lasers can be an option. They are best used on the face. They're less useful um, on things like, for example, your arms, your legs, and the body. So what else can we do? What else can you do at home? Because at the end of the day, you don't want to see a dermatologist for simple conditions like this. I'm gonna share you two products which I've just picked out from Propera. Um, basically, you can buy this or an equivalent over the counter in any major pharmacy. So one of it's lactic acid. You can get this compounded, but if you buy it like a cream like this, it'll save you seeing a dermatologist and it'll save you getting compounded uh, through a pharmacy. So anything like between 10 to 20% uh, lactic acid. So if you Google lactic acid in that concentration, use this between three to five nights per week and your keratosis pilaris will get better. The other thing you could do is to use something called urea. So urea, they can be bought at between 10% to 30% formulation. So my suggestion is start with a 10, 25% formulation, then slowly go up. Once again, this is a keratolytic, so what it can do is it can smooth out the skin. All of these topicals do not um, cure keratosis pilaris, but it can make it better and less unsightly. The other thing which I haven't mentioned is that certainly using, we talked about chemical exfoliants, but physical exfoliation can help. So what you could use is a buff buff pad, right? Um, and basically give yourself a scrub in the shower using something like 2% salicylic acid. You can use a um, exfoliating sponge. Um, and if you really need to, not that you need to do it or buy it, you can buy yourself a brush. So an exfoliating brush, something manual, or if you want to go high end, something like a Clarisonic. So guys, that is a quick summary of keratosis pilaris. Remember, it's a very common condition. Don't stress, you will, get, you will grow out of it sooner or later. 
Um, and once again, you don't need to see a dermatologist to get that treated because most of the time, just using simple exfoliation techniques, simple over-the-counter washes and over-the-counter preparations, you can actually treat this. Don't stress and stay well. See you same time, same place next week. Bye for now.